The operational period briefing occurs slightly before the operational period begins and it's attended by all of the tactical supervisors for that particular operational period and they are briefed by the incident management team. Typically, at least the command and general staff has an opportunity to present information as necessary to the folks that are going out. The purpose of it is to ensure that all of those people are getting the same message at the same time from the right person. So really it's an opportunity for the, uh, the operations section chief and the incident management team to let everybody that's going to be out on the ground working really know this is what we're, we're expecting of you, these are the things that you need to take care of, this is the support structure that's behind you, the infrastructure, gives them a, really a good overall feeling for what's in that plan and really makes them dig into that plan and say what is it all about. Let's get uh, started with today's operational briefing. Folks, please move uh, forward, and as you're doing so, turn off your cell phones, pagers, and if you would uh, keep your uh, conversations to yourself as far as the side conversations, that'll certainly help in keeping the noise level down. If you do that for me, then uh, I promise we'll get you uh, in and out of here in 30 minutes or less with all the information you need to uh, conduct today's operations. Let's go ahead and start, uh, if you would, with an uh, update on the current situation, and that's going to be our operations section chief, Rich. Thank you, Jeff, and uh, welcome to all of you. For those of you who aren't aware, what we're dealing with here is uh, earlier today we had a truck uh, coming off the uh, off-ramp there from the 265 and 17 interchange that went off the off-ramp, rolled over, and in the process dumped off 15 300-gallon totes of diazinon. Driver sustained moderate injuries, was transported to a local hospital. We currently, the spread of the diazinon is downstream here. We presently have some diking done around four of the ponds located in the area. Um, we did just receive recent uh, confirmation from field observers that pond number three does have some contamination in it. Uh, with that in mind, we have uh, notified the water companies that are downstream that in the event we continue uh, the spread of the contamination that they may have to shut down the uh, water intakes for their respective companies. Thanks. All right, thanks, Rich. Okay, if you'd go ahead and look at the front of your uh, incident action plan, the incident objectives are stated there from Unified Command. They're also uh, stated right up here uh, in case you want to refer to those. And uh, Unified Command has stated those, and that's what we're going to be working towards. On the next page after that is the organization assignment list that is basically a contact list for this operational period in case you need to get a hold of somebody. And then if you go ahead and turn your incident action plans over, and uh, you'll find the weather. Since we don't have a meteorologist, I'll go ahead and uh, just briefly highlight the, the weather, but please make sure that you go over that with your folks at the conclusion of this uh, briefing. So it looks like uh, we're going to have uh, cloudy with increasing showers, about one half inch of rain is possible. Minimum uh, uh, temperature is going to be 68 degrees. Uh, RH, somewhere between 90 and 100 percent, obviously, because it's going to be raining. And the winds are going to be southwest 8 to 15 miles an hour. And it looks like the mixing winds are also southwest, a little bit higher at 12 to 15 miles an hour. And then the outlook uh, for the next day, Sunday, is uh, cloudy with rain and showers, likely uh, heavy at times, one to two inches of rainfall possible with localized even up to uh, three inches. So obviously you may want to be uh, prepared in case they're off a little bit as far as the, uh, the time schedule. So with that, uh, the next page after that should be the operational assignments. And if you go ahead and uh, turn to those, please answer loud and clear when uh, Rich calls your name, and uh, we'll get th through this. So uh, Operations Section Chief, Rich. Thanks again. All right, as you can see from the map behind me, we presently have this divided up into two geographic divisions, Division A and Division B. We also have three functional groups presently in operation. All right, in Division A, Division Supervisor is Carson. Thank you. The Thank Operations got, uh, Section Chief will go over and all and the ICS-204 assignment one. sheets in the IAP, discussing the assignments got, uh, and Scott. completing a roll call for each division or group supervisor and each resource assigned to that okay, group or division. For the operational period will be to maintain the dike. Any unassigned resources, if you want to get with me after the operational period briefing, uh, we will get you an assignment. Thank you. All right, that's again, uh, Rich. Okay, uh, if you'd go ahead and turn to your safety message, our uh, safety officer, John, will go ahead and highlight the important aspects of that. John. Good evening. There is a uh, safety message in your IEP. Please go over that with your folks. 
Uh, in general, make sure that everybody's wearing the proper PPE for the uh, actions being taken. We will be working on and near the water waste for this shift. Everyone that's involved with that process should be wearing personal flotation devices. Uh, utilize the site safety plans that are included in the IEP. If you feel the need to revise those, please go ahead. Just send the revisions into the situation unit. Maintain situational awareness at all times, and please have a safe shift. Thank you. Thanks, John. If we had now turn uh, to the uh, 205 and the 206, the communications and medical plan, and our logistics section chief will go ahead and highlight uh, those important points. So, Dale? Okay, on the uh, 205, if there's any discrepancies anyplace else in the uh, IAP, IAP, please uh, defer back to the 205 for the correct frequencies. Uh, if you'll turn to page to the uh, 206, the medical plan, section 8 is what we want to brief you on. Notify your supervisor if any uh, immediate injury. Uh, also, make sure that they contact the division or group so that they can request an ambulance or medevac through their communications. Uh, the medical unit also has uh, established an aid station at the uh, base, which is available for minor injuries or irritations that your personnel may have. Also, meals and drinks are located in the reefer truck, which is behind the incident command post. Uh, you can pick up what you need for your people. We won't, won't be delivering them. Uh, some equipment is running low on fuel at the scene. Uh, a fuel tender has just arrived and will park in the staging area. Uh, supplies on the east side of the incident command post. We have some extra personal protection equipment and a few other supplies. You can check out what you need there for your personnel. All right, thanks, Dale. Next, with some important finance information, is Bill. We're setting up a time unit in the south office of the incident command post. Make sure that all your workers have recorded their times and collected the paperwork before they go through demobilization. The local agencies are, are determining if they're meeting the thresholds for FEMA reimbursement. I'll be giving an update at the end of the, the shift. All right, thanks a lot, Bill. Next, information. Carol. Thanks, Jeff. You're going to see a lot of media people around the scene today, so please let's try to help them out and uh, get our message out as long as they don't interfere with your operations. In your incident action plan, you will see a list of the, our contact information and also where we will be doing our media briefings. All right, thanks, Carol. We've got a lot of uh, assisting agencies and cooperating agencies, and uh, heading up our cooperating agency is our liaison officer, Jim, and he's going to highlight some points there. Jim? I'm trying to make contact with uh, every agency that's represented here on this incident. So if you or your agency rep has not checked in with me yet, please do so at the end of the ops briefing on the left hand side behind the stage. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay, representing uh, Unified Command, our Unified Commanders are here. We've got uh, Joe from uh, Jefferson County who's going to be elected as the uh, Unified Command spokesperson. We also have Ben from EPA and John from uh, Department of Environmental Quality. So, Joe. On behalf of all three of us in Unified Command, uh, we'd like to thank you for being here at the briefing. This incident is causing a huge impact to the community with the closure of, of Highway 265, the potential impact to the domestic water supply and the environment in general. It's very important for us to get on top of this as fast as we can. So if there's anything we can do to help you out out there, just notify your supervisor. We'll, we'll do whatever we can to make your job faster and easier. You'll notice your top priority is uh, the safety of responders and the public, so we want to emphasize that. Make sure your folks are operating in a safe manner. We want everybody to uh, finish this assignment unharmed and go out there and uh, have a good shift and hope we can get a lot of work done before those heavy rains come in because that's going to change things very drastically uh, once, once we get that lar large amount of rain they're predicting. So with that, thanks a lot. All right, thanks a lot, Joe. Okay, that uh, concludes the operational briefing. Go ahead and uh, turn your cell phones, pagers, and uh, radios back on. Uh, remember, Division Alpha is meeting right here. Division Bravo is meeting right over there. Law and Decon are behind us uh, on the loading dock. And, of course, then we've got the treatment uh, group, which is meeting down the hall to the right. With that, please go ahead and meet up with your uh, division or group supervisors, and thank you very much for attending. <laughs>